Welcome everyone to another Rebots episode. In this video, we will talk about RoboDK and simulation. Simulating with a Python script uh, with a camera support. In this episode, we will do use the OpenCV and the webcam. So first of all, as last time, you need to have a Kukabar proxy installed. And then you go into the smart pod, go into auto, select the program, RoboDK Sync, and then you will see that it's running. You need to press play, and when everything's green and the program is looping, then you can connect to the robot and right click on the Python script. So you right click on the Python script, execute on the robot. So these are the sample movements. Target one, as you can see the simulation. Target one. Then goes target two. This is the second target. And then target three. Okay. After showing the movements, the webcam will come up with OpenCV. So here we are, OpenCV detecting. This is target one, remember? I'm controlling the robot with my hand, it's signaling. Target two. And target three. And we can cycle through them. Just one. And up. Oh. Let's make it faster. Two. Oh. One. Three. Two. 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 One. And that's it. So let me show you how you can use your webcam and a Python script on RoboDK. First of all, let's review the steps. You will need to have Kukabar proxy installed and in the stew config file, all of the global variables that RoboDK asks you to put and have the program running. As always, I use Ultra VNC remote desktop to connect to the smartpad and control remotely. So this is what we did last time. Uh, we started a new station and we did uh, two movements and then we transferred these two movements into the robot. Pretty simple. Uh, let me show you. So, well, uh, we start the RoboDK sync. And once you have the server running and listening to the input commands from RoboDK software, you can send offline programs. For example, last time we did uh, some two targets and one program with two movements. And then you can loop them and execute them on the robot directly. And of course, uh, you can simulate them beforehand. So now the program is running and we can right click, uh, connect to the robot or go into connect, uh, connect to the robot on the top bar. After connecting to the robot, you can create a few targets first. These are my two targets and this is the program with the two movements. When you add a movement, the target is uh, created if it's in different position. And then you can execute it to see the simulation or you can right click and loop it and or right click and execute it on the robot. Since we've done this, we've done this before, uh, I'll open the new program with the vision system. So let's open the project and let me show you guys uh, the code and explain a bit uh, how it works. So here we go. Uh, these are the three targets that I've created this time. Uh, a bit different, so yeah, it's obvious when I move in like uh, the references, we can simulate the targets. Uh, this is a normal program in RoboDK, nothing special. And what we wanted to show is the Python script, right? So this is the Python script. All you need to do is uh, click on the, on the top bar, there's a Python icon. I'll show you now after I drag this first, so you can see. Here there are some APIs from RoboDK and the targets that have to be created. Uh, and these are the movements, uh, just to check that it's working. So let's go. This is the sample. There is a template for the Python script. As you can see, you just 
click on it, and then it creates a Python program on RoboDK. Uh, the first two rows are normally just the imports of the API. Then you declare a RoboLink. And once you declare RoboLink, you can import the, the targets. So uh, first of all, let me show you guys what we've been working on. Uh, we've been researching OpenCV, which is a library for artificial vision. It has like a optimized uh, real-time computer vision library tools and also MediaPipe. MediaPipe is an open source cross-platform machine learning solution. It helps us uh, detect objects and in this case, the hand. This way, we don't need to create a model and train it. In this sample project, we are hand tracking and also face tracking. This is uh, due to the fact that we are trying to make a program that is more secure. So if uh, there's no face detected, then the signaling won't be working. But we didn't implement this in the RoboDK example. But let me show you what I mean. So if I detect a face and I put my hand inside the box, then it will detect the hand. And as you can see, uh, you can see the vector of the hand of all the fingers. So uh, let me demonstrate what I mean by the fingers. If I leave the pinky or just the thumb, you will see the numbers changing depending on which finger. So this is my if statement in the rope decay. I will link the code in the description below in GitHub uh, afterwards. I think you guys get the idea of this. So right now we're using OpenCV and MediaPipe. So let's go back to RoboDK and execute the sample program that I showed uh, in the beginning. Okay, I forgot to connect to the robot. Let's connect to the robot. And also, uh, I feel there are some mistakes because I added a new target uh, just to show you guys uh, two more movements because then you can see that I'm not looping from one to two. Uh, there you can see the finger state uh, that we were talking about in the Visual Studio Code and the target. It's saying target 2, so I'll need to change that. Uh, but as you can see, it's going to target 3. It's just that the caption is wrong. Uh, if I go into the code right now and try to change it, sometimes it doesn't change. I'm not sure why. Maybe I need to disconnect the robot first before changing uh, the code. Uh, I don't like this part about row decay. Because uh, as you can see right now, I changed uh, to target three and run the program again. But even though I changed uh, into target three, uh, as you can see right now, when the webcam pops up, well, the OpenCV canvas, basically, that's target one, that's target two, and this is target three, and it didn't change. So <laughs> let me go back into the program script and we check it, and as I said before, it didn't save. So let me save it properly. I did Control S last time. Maybe it's uh, you need to create and just save. Right now, it seems like it did save. Let's let's execute the program again, and um, hopefully this time around, uh, target one works. Yes, two and three. Okay, so right now we've checked that it works in the simulation. Uh, let's check it on the robot directly. So let's execute the program. We can hear the movements. Uh, right now I'm uh, recording here the screen, but you can see uh, after it pops up the webcam that if I use my fingers, position one, position two, it works just the same as in the simulation. So in an actual application, we thought that it would be more secure to avoid those false positives by detecting the face and creating a secure square for the hand. Because uh, as you can see in the beginning, when I was like moving the robot fast and you are detecting the hand from far away, it might have some uh, issues. But overall, uh, it did work quite well. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you liked it. If you like this, like and subscribe as always. And if you have any doubts, comments or suggestions, just leave a comment below. See you in the next video.